Now I'm going to recognize myself for five minutes. I just have a few more questions that I would like to share with you, and specifically, Mr. Wells, you said during your testimony that uh, the President uh, Petro uh, works very well with the rest of Central American um, countries that are exporting people to the United States. But I just want to share with you the fact that the Panamanian um, uh, foreign minister and some people at the highest level of the Panamanian government came to my office and told me specifically that they have a problem with Colombia because more than 400,000 people have arrived uh, through the Darien uh, jungle and Colombia really doesn't stop them. On the contrary, Colombia and under the Petro administration lets them come through and the Pan Panamanians find themselves having a major problem because they cannot absorb so many people trying to go through Central America to get to the Mexican border. So could you please explain to me what is the, the, the difference between your statements and what the Panamanians are, are living, are experiencing on the ground? Th thank you for the question. A as I mentioned, there are 2.5 million Venezuelans who have stayed in Colombia, so the Colombians are playing host to that group. That's a group that is not going north. There are a lot going north, and the United States engages a uh, multi-country, multi-agency effort to uh, basically take three lines of action. One is enforcement, one is diplomacy. No, but I don't think that's what I asked you. I asked you the relationship between Colombia and Panama. Specifically, the Panamanians do not think that the Colombians are helping them stop the traffic. I think it's a, it is a regular problem. I, I, mean, I mentioned earlier, we but are uh, you aware help the them coordinating. But are you aware what the Panamanians are saying? I'm sure the Panamanians have come to the State Department and explained, explained their concerns. Yeah. They well, need Colombia's help in order to stop the flow of people through the Darien jungle. And when I served in Bogota from 2019 to 2021, I got the same complaint uh, that, that the Colombians don't do enough to, to stop the trafficking or the, the, the free movement of, of Venezuela. But mostly don't you Venezuela think that Americans. now has things are gotten worse and that Colombia is helping less? Uh, I think there is an uptick in trafficking as the situation in Venezuela worsens. There, there are greater outflows of, of migrants, and we do continue to work with uh, both sides but of you the have Darien. not helped. You have not heard from the Colombians that concern that I just explained to you. You have not heard that from the, Col from the Panamanians. Uh, I have heard that in the past, yes. But no, now in the present. Uh, I, 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 and I hate to apologize, but I actually don't cover Panama. So, uh, but but I, I know that, that it is a complaint, and I know that we work with them. It's why I mentioned the joint operations in the Darien that we uh, worked on earlier this summer. Okay. Now, what about the ELN? You know, as I s explained during my opening remarks, that the uh, the Petro government is negotiating with the ELN, which is one of the two guerrilla movements in Colombia. The, the ELN right now is in the terrorist list. By any chance, the State Department is thinking or considering the possibility of removing the ELN from the terrorist list be, due to the fact that uh, Petro, the Petro administration is wanting to negotiate peace with them. No, we are not considering removing the ELN from the foreign terrorist organization. Good. List. Uh, the ELN process is something that we are watching, we're monitoring, and we are in constant communication with the Colombian government about it. I think, as I mentioned earlier, we want to maintain some uh, healthy skepticism about it because the ELN is a terrorist organization. Um, they have started peace processes in the past and they have not fulfilled it. Next week, there is a ceasefire, that is a six-month ceasefire that is supposed to go into effect, and we call on the ELN to protect civilians and uh, any victims uh, of their uh, their terrorist activities. They need to be accountable. And for, what do for you think about the ceasefire. fact that the ELN sprayed graffiti on Maria Corina Machado's office? The Biden administration has been working with uh, the Maduro government. And my question is, don't you think that maybe we should be sending a message to uh, President Petro and President Maduro that Maria Corina should be protected and should be um, guarded against any type of threats? We, we obviously condemned that act and uh, we were Did you know about it? Yes, and we were pleased to see that President Petro also condemned it and he called on the the suspension of Maria Corina Machado's uh, disqualification to be lifted because he Good. himself experienced a similar treatment years ago. Of course, of course, we all want a democracy in both countries. Now, based finally, um, you also know the um, some of the comments that 
President Petro has made against the Colombian press. He called them uh, specifically racist, uh, enemy of the people, and that they have incited genocide. Um, what do you think about the Colombian press? You have many of those members among you here in this hearing. In my understanding, the Colombian press is pretty impartial and they do a good job. Do you agree with what President Petro is saying that they are racist, the enemy of the people, specifically the enemy of the people? No, the press, independent press is not the enemy of the people um, anywhere. Uh, I believe that uh, the Colombian journalism is, is excellent. Uh, they have a lot of investigative journalism. Um, and in fact, they're the ones that have investigated a lot of the corruption allegations that uh, President Petro is facing now. And so Good. I, they will continue to do that uh, because- so This is a you know, very important message that you're saying, Mr. Wells, and I'm very happy that you're doing it, that you're saying it, because the Colombians have very independent, rigorous news media, and we need to preser preserve them. Regardless of how they are covering the news, is that's up to them, which is the same case in the United States. So I'm glad that the State Department is sending that message to the Petro administration, do not touch the press. Do you agree with me? Yeah, in fact, the existence uh, really shows the strength and vitality of Colombian democracy today. Indeed, and that's why we need to preserve that vibrancy in the Colombian democracy. Agreed. You agree with me? I agree. And do you feel by any chance that Mr. Petro, President Petro, may be one of those um, hindrances or, um, or um, forces against the continuation of that democracy? As I said um, earlier, we have relationships with the uh, institutions. I, I don't want to comment on every single tweet he puts out. I think he issues more than a, do a dozen tweets a day. He's one of the most prolific tweeters. Um, I, I will say we support Colombian institutions. Uh, we believe that Colombian democracy is, remains strong today. And do you have any fear that those Colombian institutions may be under threat? I do not. Good. Well, let's keep it that way. Thank you, sir. And now I recognize.